Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, baby. It is the weekend. What is it? Uh, the 17th, 18th, something like that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We have a bunch of stories. So much, I don't want to waste too much time uh, for this intro, but I will remind you, we do have a Switch OLED giveaway going on right now. To enter, all you need to do is be subscribed. Uh, we then have a link down in the description to a live stream on October 1st uh, that you also must attend to win. Winner will be drawn live, but you must be subscribed. All right, that's pretty simple. We also have this new shirt here, uh, pretty cool. Uh, link to the merch down in the description. Um, I really like it anyways, uh, this hat as well. Although someone told me I should keep this hat even though I don't think it's the greatest quality. So I don't know, I think it looks nice, but I don't know. Well, I'm making some adjustments to the design. So don't buy the podcast hat yet. That being said, uh, let's just get right into what's happening today. All right, so our first story is going to be a bit of a rumor. Actually, I'm going to call these all rumors because of where they come from. We actually have six things to get to today, and uh, two of them involve rumors, four of them involve real things that we could tangibly talk about. Uh, but let's first get into the first batch of rumors, and these ones come from Samus Hunter. You guys might know who that is. If you don't, she is a user over on Twitter that's had a bunch of things right. Like, I don't know, it, it's a crazy 95%. Uh, things right but usually they're on the smaller side and i would argue a lot of these are on the smaller side as well but she decided to um talk about things that nintendo plans to talk about in the upcoming months not necessarily saying there will or won't be a nintendo direct but mostly just talking about hey these are the things that nintendo is going to talk about around here's around the timetables that they're going to want these things talked about so here is what she tweeted out uh she said aspects that will be discussed within the next few months Mario Party side modes, this game up there, um, like the single player one and the remaining boards with an overview trailer towards the end of the month slash October. Um, you're also going to be talking about Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl and Legends news on a monthly basis. Uh, then she follows up that tweet by saying um, Mario Golf will be talked about, uh, some, some sort of update for that at the end of September or October. Smash, the new Smash character, the final update, all that is supposed to be talked about in October. Uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons will be talked about, uh, an update for that in October slash November. And then obviously we have the Hyrule Warrior Age of Calamity final DLC uh, that is going to be talked about in November. Also says there will be details at some point about an editor mode in Advance Force 1 Plus 2 reboot. So again, she is just saying this is happening. Those are, these are all rumors, but obviously uh, I feel pretty credible rumors at this point based on her track record. We'll have to wait and see. I heard October mentioned a lot, which does make me think if there is a direct October might be it because October was the date for a lot of this stuff, but we'll have to wait and see. I still believe there will be a direct before the Switch OLED comes out, which technically could happen that first full week of October. But you know, at this point, I have no idea when a direct is coming, nor do you, nor do any of us. Only Nintendo can really tell us what's happening there. Next up, we're going to be talking about THQ Nordic and a specific game they announced yesterday called SpongeBob SquarePants The Cosmic Shake. Now, they actually had a number of announcements in their uh, presentation yesterday, and oh, this is the only one coming to Nintendo Switch. Uh, there is one of the other announcements I think will be coming to Switch, and maybe they're saving it for a direct announcement or something because the first game was on Switch. But it's neither here nor there. We're not going to focus on the non-switch stuff. We'll just get into this. Uh, because obviously we all know we have Battle for Bikini Bottom. Which to me, I own B Battle for Bikini Bottom. And it actually was a better game than I expected it to be. Um, I wouldn't say you know it's like A plus tier platforming and all that jazz. But it was actually a pretty solid game. And while we don't really see any real gameplay from this. We just see a lot of stuff teased from Spongebob of course. Uh, over the history, uh, and yes, it does use the sweet victory music. Oh, you guys remember that episode? Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty cool, and it seems to be playing on the heartstrings of classic SpongeBob, calling back to a lot of the first five seasons or so, really the first couple of seasons uh, for a lot of this stuff. And um, I'm a huge SpongeBob fan. I don't know how many people know this. I love SpongeBob SquarePants. Literally, it is watched in our house every single day. Yeah, my kids watch it. But uh, forget the kids. Me and Yulia watch SpongeBob SquarePants almost every single day or night. We watch other stuff as well, but SpongeBob is always a go-to when we're feeling down. Anyways, 
Here are some notes that come directly from THQ Nordic. It says, everything is possible in the infinite expanses of the cosmos. There might even be a reality where mayonnaise is an and instrument. Is mayonnaise an instrument? I'm sorry, I lost my drop. Um, when the mysterious fortune teller Cassandra, that's like the name of my sister. Interesting. Uh, Grant SpongeBob and Patrick wishes the two buddies unintentionally open up portals to strange wish worlds. It's all F U N fun and games until their friends get lost in the portals. Explore seven distinct worlds and don more than 30 cosmic skins to rescue the universe of the brand new adventure SpongeBob SquarePants The Cosmic Shake. You will unlock classic and new platforming skills like the fish hook swing and the karate kick. Don more than 30 F-U-N-tastic costumes like Snail Bob and SpongeGar. Travel the seven distinct wish worlds like Wild West Jellyfish Fields and Halloween Rock Bottom. Experience all the buddy movie banter with SpongeBob's permanent companion, Balloon Patrick. What? <laughs> uh, meet all your favorite bikini bottomites from the series, voiced by their original actors. And that's always cool to get the original voice cast there. Um, which are still voicing SpongeBob characters to this day on the show. Enjoy the in-game soundtrack featuring 101 songs from the series, including "Sweet, Sweet, Sweet Victory." Ah, oh, I am excited for this game. If you can't tell, um, no release date details on this yet. Uh, and again, we didn't even see gameplay, so I would presume it's probably not going to end up coming this year. But maybe it will. Who knows? This has detail, more details will be coming in the future. So we'll have to wait and see on that for up. But yes, SpongeBob SquarePants. It's a new video game. And I can't believe I'm on a Saturday in September talking about a SpongeBob video game and actually excited for it. Like legit, not like trying to bullshit you. Wow. That's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so Nintendo of Japan has announced that there is going to be a Skyward Sword HD official soundtrack coming out. You guys see it pictured up here. It's pretty cool. It's a uh, five-disc set, and it does come with a music box that plays Ballad of the Goddess. Uh, you can't buy this in North America, although some people are saying you can obviously get it shipped from Amazon Japan. It's going to cost over 100 bucks to do so, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I always wonder why sets like this don't tend to come to the United States. We tend to see a lot of these boxed CD sets um for official soundtracks or even ballad of the goddess or like the the symphony it seems to always come out in japan and not here maybe it's because here i don't know how many people even have like music cd players that can even play these discs anymore um they're kind of become a relic of the past so maybe that's why but the least they could do is take this soundtrack and officially release it on like spotify or itunes or something right like we don't have a way to actually purchase this stuff and when people upload it to youtube nintendo copyright claims it so I don't really know. Uh, this is obviously a highly collectible thing. I'm a big fan of Skyward Sword, let alone Skyward Sword HD. Uh, so yes, 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 I'm glad it's here. But also, boo that there's like no way officially, legally in the US for us to enjoy this. This just ends up promoting piracy, which is certainly going to be the case yet again. But it is a really, really cool thing if you do get your hands on it and decide to import it from Japan. I'm not sure what the exact release date is or was. I was trying to dig it up, and I had different retailers in Japan giving me different dates. So it's just, it's coming this year. So if you guys remember a couple days ago, we had a story about Nintendo filing a new, um, a new thing with the FCC, basically, that can get unveiled on March 6th for a Nintendo Switch game controller. Uh, and what's interesting, and this is something I forgot to note, is that some people are bringing up this the fact that it's an H that that the part number on it it's HAC-043 and the part number on the SNES controllers for Nintendo Switch was HAC-042. Uh so people take this to mean this is clearly going to be N64 controllers. But as RGT85 noted yesterday in a video he did, uh shout out to him I guess for mentioning this. He's wrong, but that's okay. Uh, he went through this list of all of the HAC dash whatever numbers and noted that there's not really a rhyme or reason to it. They have styluses in their pro controllers um, or a, a, the pro controller, um, you know, different accessories, the, the different docks, all that. Just. So basically every single thing that you could, could technically call an accessory um, is there that Nintendo has officially released. And so it directly following the SNES controller doesn't mean that it's N64 controllers. But the problem is that RGT85 went so far as to say, 
There's not even a guarantee that it's a controller. That is where I actually take issue. Um, RGT85, I don't think he intentionally did this, but I don't think he realizes the FCC filing itself says game controller. It's not a stylus. It's not a uh, case. It's not a, 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 an optional dock or, or whatever, or a screen protector. This is a game controller. The reason people bring up, however, the SNES version is because the SNES version actually only has the one listing, whereas the NES version has two. So there's the left controller and the right controller have different listings on the site versus the SNES controller that just has one HAC listing. But either way, I think this obviously is pointing towards N64 because I don't even know how you would do a Game Boy controller that slides on the side of Switch. I, I don't even, I can't even imagine how it's possible because everything you need for a Game Boy controller exists on the Joy-Cons. And even then, if you want to argue, but, 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 okay, get, get the NES controllers. They have the exact same controller layout. Maybe they will do Game Boy controllers. I don't know. I just don't know how you justify needing Game Boy controllers or how it would add any sort of nostalgia. See, the NES, SNES, and N64 have some nostalgia attached to them. This doesn't. Now, I do worry about the ability of, or how big the N64 controllers will be because if they go with the original size, the N64 controllers, I'm not sure this switch would be dockable. And yes, obviously you see those slide-on controllers here. That's not how, that's not how the N64 controllers would likely work. It would, it would be side-loaded. Side so you could have two players, but I don't know. That's just kind of what's floating out there. So I just wanted to do a small update on the story and maybe correct some misinformation that seems to be floating out there that these aren't going to be controllers at all when the listing says game controller. You would be literally saying that, that Nintendo lied to the FCC. But yeah, we still don't know what kind of controller it's going to be. So last night we put up a video about a rumor around Breath of the Wild 2 getting delayed. And the source we used for it, uh, I mentioned, was someone who has been reliable earlier this year. Uh, and I have no reason to really doubt this person. But the problem is that right after I put that video up, the, the source put up an update on that rumor. And unfortunately, because of the timing of the release of my video to when that update went out, maybe, the update, maybe they even put that update out because of my video. Um, I couldn't really update that video and I didn't really want to take it down because I don't think the video is entirely quote unquote misinformation. Um, I think it's a possible eventuality, but let's get into this update on it today or this morning that says, um, you know, you know, the, the person posted the breath of the wild to delay rumors to clarify the rumor that was told to us and others from certain sources was there was an original delay for the game outside of 2021. And this is something I speculated a long time ago, that this was a 2021 game because of COVID got delayed. Again, they're saying that this information comes from a long time ago. However, it was going to be a big summer 2022 launch. That was apparently Nintendo's plan. And it has now been delayed to fall 2022 or holiday 2022, whichever one you want to look at. And that's why the date is still not released. And again, this is just what this person is saying. So they're saying that these are all internal delays rather than public delays. Because a public delay would be, well, if it's delayed, it only has a public date of 2022. So to be delayed would be, well, the public year changed to 2023. And that's kind of what we went off of yesterday. But it turns out it's more so an internal delay. And this is why there isn't a date given because Nintendo isn't quite sure when the game will be done. I do want to note, however, that Nintendo still has that long history of delaying releases of Zelda games. Skyward Sword got delayed. Twilight Princess got delayed. Breath of the Wild got delayed. And I'm talking about public release date delays, not just internal release date delays. There have been delays. Well, Ocarina of Time. Majora's Mask didn't have a delay, but Ocarina of Time had a delay. A Link to the Past had a delay, if you guys can remember way back when. I know... Not many people can remember it because we didn't have social media and the internet going as a big deal back then. But the point is, Zelda games always get delayed. So um, it getting delayed out of next year, I think this kind of points to a trend of that being definitely possible. If it's been delayed internally out of 2021 to summer of 2022 and now it's delayed from that to fall or you know holiday of 2022, again, this just points to a consistent trend of delaying the game and eventually delaying the public released date which is 2022 but anyway, we'll have to wait and see um i just wanted to make an amendment to clarify since they clarify what they meant by a 
delay. Last but not least, we have a bunch of photos of the Switch OLED in the wild. These are the first publicly available, um, you know, basically the first, first time the public can see it. Um, these are happening at retailers out in Tokyo in Japan um, who are going to be putting this system up for pre-order in a week or I guess six days from now on the 24th. Uh, and yeah, the photos actually look really, really interesting. Um, we get our first look at like Metroid Dread. I think there's another one with like Splatoon 2 on there and Mario Kart 8. Um, so it, it's really interesting to see uh, these things. The problem obviously being that nobody is holding up their current Switch with those games running to actually compare what that screen looks like. So, and these are obviously taken with cell phones. So we got compression and, and auto correction of cell phones um, combined with a lack of video to really see what this looks like in motion combined with a lack of being able to actually directly compare side by side. Because if you take your switch today and hold it up next to these photos that I'm showing, um, you're not necessarily going to notice a big difference because there's already compression and stuff messed up with the that and then you have the youtube compression combined with the compression obviously of my video editing program which is actually set to like not really compress assets my video files i upload to youtube are just massive uh but youtube does compress my videos massively uh before they get to you guys so you're already dealing with double or triple compression uh before you even get to compare it's just not going to be a good comparison and that is why the best comparisons that you can get without actually seeing it you know in person and comparing it yourself because that might require you buy a switch oled uh, would be when i do my full breakdown i actually plan to do a massive um ultimate comparison of that switch oled uh to the base switch and the switch light uh they will all be in the same shot shot with the same cameras uh, so the comparison, even with compression, will be the exact same compression applied to everything. So you could still be able to tell the fundamental differences between that screen and the other ones. And then obviously when we take them apart, you know, the insides and the differences there. Um, and then obviously, you know, if there's any differences with the docks internally beyond the LAN port, we're going to show that as well. Uh, and yeah, we'll obviously show a, a few different games. Uh, that I feel like make for great comparisons. Someone mentioned Cruisin' Blast might actually be a good game to show it off due to the vibrancy of the colors in that game already. Uh, and that might be one we test out. The bottom line is I'll probably pick that game up, but I'm going to test out a very, you know, a bunch of different games before I decide which ones are going to really show the difference. And if there's ones that don't show the difference, I want to show you that as well, because maybe if you only play certain games, maybe that OLED screen won't make a difference in terms of the colors. Also, obviously, the size difference. Um, you can show it in hand because uh, we're going to have a top-down camera and, and a camera shooting this way. So we'll be switching angles uh, to show you different things there, you know, how it looks in different docks, moving the OG switch into the OLED dock, all this stuff. We're going to show you everything we possibly can um, to give you the ultimate comparison. Uh, the only thing we won't be doing is comparing thermals, although we will talk a little bit about uh, potential thermals with the platform if there's a heat sink and fan change compared to the OG switch. We can at least note that those changes exist and then go from there uh but we're not gonna try any sort of thermal camera um you know stuff like that I, the, the best way to do it by the way is with probes and uh, i don't have the uh tech on hand anymore i used to be able to back when i uh i actually used to manufacture motherboards and chipsets that go on motherboards and all that and we would actually have the probes in final testing to test all that stuff i don't have that that stuff here those tools cost a lot of money uh, and I don't do it often enough to justify the purchase. But I do have kits to take apart everything and do it safely. Um, and if I break my stuff taking it apart, hey, I can even notate in the video that they changed something about how difficult it is to take apart. Uh, I will not be removing the screens themselves. I know some people um, want me to do that because uh, they want to see the exact manufacturer of the screen. Um, that is something that if someone else has already done it by the time I get my video out on day one, I will definitely note who the manufacturer is. But basically, I don't need to take apart the screen to confirm it's actually an OLED panel. You could tell just by how the screen is lit up. Um, LED versus OLED, big difference. Uh, we'll be able to tell just by looking at the screen. We won't need to literally break the screen, basically, to tell uh, what it is. So, anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am with Andrew Rebel Jets from the Twitter Prime. Hopefully, you really enjoyed this video. And it was extremely informative for you because that's what I try to provide is informative stuff. Uh, what a great way to kick off our weekend with a Nintendo Prime video, huh? Something I didn't even expect today when I started yesterday, but then yesterday I took a big nap. Really, I, I napped a long time yesterday. It was insane. I needed it. All right, folks, I'll catch you guys in the next video.